Hello, everybody. My name is Richard Moschella, MS4 at the University of Massachusetts Medical School. This is a quality improvement project on the care and management of patients presenting to the emergency department with atrial fibrillation. The research is partially supported by institutional grants, and the investigators retain full independence in the project. As most likely know, atrial fibrillation, or AFib, is one of the most common irregular heart rhythms seen in the emergency department. It's associated with a myriad of adverse outcomes, including heart failure, stroke, and mortality. Emergency department care of patients with AFib can be highly variable. And studies suggest that this lack of standardization can decrease the quality of care. Our goal was to implement a quality improvement project and study its effect on the clinical outcomes for patients presenting to the ED with AFib. We did this by implementation of AFib-specific education to ED providers. Specifically, we used a before and after design chart review at our tertiary academic center. Data was collected from the months of December 2017 through July of 2019. Our intervention took place in, in September of 2018 and data collected during that month was considered washout. Data was recorded in a customizable REDCap database. For our intervention, we established an institutional algorithm that was based largely on prior published algorithms for the care of AFib patients in the emergency department. We attempted to make our algorithm optically and user-friendly and utilized the specific resources of our institution. We then educated ED providers through lectures by embedding the algorithm in the electronic health record system and with periodic email reminders. Our primary outcomes were AFib admission rates and length of stay. And we included patients, patients presenting with AFib as their principal problem and excluded patients presenting with any other principal problem that otherwise guided their management. These are the algorithms used. I won't walk through each step but we'll point out that we use concurrent rate and rhythm management for stable patients, and there were specific indications for a ED cardioversion attempts. These algorithms provided a broad brush strokes guide for the care of patients presenting with AFib. The more specific decisions, such as the choice between biltiazem and metoprolol, for instance, were left to clinicians to use their best clinical judgment. So for our study, we had a sample size of 363 patients, 171 in the pre-intervention group and 166 in the post-intervention group. For all patients that met inclusion criteria, admission rates decreased from 54% to 37% with a p-value of less than 0.003. This change in admission rates can be further explored with the hospital admission trend which shows that the decrease in admission rates was most significant in the months directly following the implementation, which is illustrated with the black dotted line in the center of the graph. During the months of about January post-implementation, the hospital admission trend began to increase again. And while this may be due to seasonal variation, this was also the point that we stopped sending out periodic email reminders and may suggest the need for continued provider education through the use of spaced repetition of educational resources. The length of stay decreased from 38 hours to 32 hours, although this decrease was not statistically significant with a p-value of 0.13. Our secondary outcome of attempted ED cardioversion rate increased from 16% to 21%, although this increase was again, not statistically significant. For limitations, this was a largely medical student led retrospective single center study with a limited time frame and sample size. We were also underpowered for some of our secondary outcome metrics. It was difficult to assess the proper utilization of our clinical decision support guidelines as this was done largely by chart review of the electronic health record system. For conclusions, this small scale, simple educational and clinical decision support intervention 
significantly decreased hospital admission rates. Hospital admission trends suggested the need for continued provider education, perhaps through the spaced repetition of educational resources. And there were trends towards a decreased length of stay and increased rate of ED cardioversion attempts. For our future directions, we plan to continue following up with data collection months and continuing provider education. We will evaluate provider feedback on this study, as well as measure additional quality metrics and patient care metrics. We plan to further develop the clinical decision support guidelines in the electronic health record system and possibly use this to guide clinicians in a stepwise manner through the management of patients presenting to the ED with AFib. I'd like to thank Dr. Chad Darling, who oversaw and led this project, and the entire UMass Emergency Medicine Department. Thank you very much.